I'm Ellie. I'm Chris. And this is Beggars Believe, home of scams, shams, hoaxes, pranks, and charlatans. Stories that are true, but somebody's lying. Wow. Yeah. It's like we it's like we just recorded this yesterday. There was no gap at all. Had none at all. No. Nope. No, here's the thing, because of the way they're gonna be released, the last episode is gonna be the one with the gap. This one will be the one that's at a normal time frame. Perfect. Yeah, the vacation happened at the wrong time because audio issues. Yeah, and mushroom people. And mushroom people. <laughs> Such as that happens. Yeah, we're going to do two short episodes, mishmash, put together, whatever. We still haven't come up with a real name for these episodes. No, but, you know, if anybody wants to, like, workshop something and throw it at us. Yeah, email. That'd be great, email. you know, email us. I, I, I had a, a decent idea, and by the time I, like, woke up fully, it had left, but I shouldn't trust decent ideas that I have while half asleep because they're usually pretty bad. Start journal them again. I did. Where are they? Okay, so I woke up the one time and I had, like, written down in my journal, tie wine charms to tampons. And after that, I decided that whatever dreams or whatever thoughts I was coming up with at night were not, in fact, as brilliant as I thought they were. So that mishmash that we're doing yeah, today, exactly. that mosh mish mosh. <laughs> Mushroom mishmash. That slamma jamma peanut butter <laughs> jelly episode. That's, Let's do it. There you go. So you remember how in our last episode, the two hoaxers were both named Sergey? Yes. So we're starting us out for this story with two men named Steven. It's always a Steve or a Sergey. Always. Always a Steve or a Sergey. Or probably two blokes named Steven because this took place in Liverpool, England in the 90s. I am not going to attempt a Liverpool accent. Because, I'm not either. No, I will just insult some. Uh, you, you just had no problem doing a Russian accent. Yeah. <laughs> and? I've seen Liverpool people when they respond to soccer uh i don't correct want yeah i don't need yeah, that let's not do that so these two would go into bars and clubs and walk up to drunk men so pretend you are a drunk liverpoolian Boy. and they would say we're raising money for charity okay and we need to collect something for charity here's a fist no okay we just need your socks my so my, i'm a drunk Liverpoolian yes, at the a pub, pub, and I'm approached by two men, named both named Stephen. Yes. And they ask for a donation, mm -hmm. and they just want my socks. Yes. At this point, they're getting them. Yeah. Like, at this point, I'm like, this is, like, the wildest, coolest thing I've heard. Yeah. They have said, my socks. This is fun little fundraiser if we They might be, like, slightly pissed on, but take my socks. Yeah. They said if we if we if we collect three hundred pairs of socks, they would the charity would get three hundred pounds. Okay, you know I'm I am like sloshed to the wind, so I'm all in. I'm like good on you boys, like exactly good. It, exactly, everyone there approaching is shit faced, so they'd agree, take off their socks, and then they'd be like, hey, let's take a picture of you because you're donating these to charity. So they'd take a picture with their socks. Just holding their socks. Yeah, for this charity. Okay. There was no charity. No, yeah, I got that part once I sobered up. There's just two named guys named Steven, and they're exceptional foot fetishes. Uh, <laughs> it went where I hoped it wouldn't go. And, and people would ask them sometimes what kind of charity. Usually it's a cancer charity, but it's a charity. It's charitable. You're thinking this too much. Just just hand over your socks for, for charity. And just ignore the comment about the toes. Exactly. Yes. So they became known as the Southport Sockmen. See, that sounds like a wonderful little like football team. Yeah, right. And I would I would be out there every day supporting the Sockmen. Uh, yeah, exactly. Until I saw the mascot. See, my brain went more Muppetish, you know. Oh, it's I know. the Sockmen, and they're like the chorus in a children's show. Yeah. No. Oh, you know, fair enough. Mm -hmm. It can be both. There you go. Over the course of their scam. They managed to con an approximately 15,000 people into giving them the socks off of their feet. 15,000? 15,000. That is a lot of blood blisters from walking home sockless. That's 30,000 socks. <laughs> I'm bad at math, but I can do that math. That's 30,000 socks <laughs> from a bunch of wasted blokes exactly. in Liverpool. Who think that they are, in fact, giving them to a charity. And apparently not questioning how socks equals money. It's like the South Park yeah. underwear gnomes. Correct. Like. <laughs> yeah. It's question mark, question mark, profit. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's this charity for? Um, 
schooners? Yeah, it's 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 very charitable. This ch- charity for the ch- ch- just give me your socks. Yeah, this charity's are coming. Are those oil? It's, Come it's, on, hand yeah, them over. Yeah, it's coming along. <laughs> like They're thirty thousand vic- socks, Mel. <laughs> Their victims included two cops and a traffic warden. I mean, okay, good for mo- good for them. Yeah, but I don't know if you remember, but when I texted you, I said this case is going to lock knock your socks off. I, as soon as you yeah. started on this, I vividly saw that text in my brain again <laughs> and went, oh, God. So there is a gap in reporting, and I hate it because I cannot find out what broke this case. I don't know if it was there was enough people reporting this that they finally investigated it or what. But the police ended up raiding their apartments. So Stephen Gawthorpe, this is where our two Stevens diverge. All right. Stephen Le- kind of a left foot, right foot thing. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, <laughs> they're a matching pair, but not quite. One of them has a hole. Um, Stephen Gawthorpe had taken each pair of fo- socks, folded them up neatly with the picture of the or- order, and cataloged them, cataloged them, storing them in little baggies. Yeah, he had a full filing cabinet. Now we're getting to, like, silence of the lambs kind of territory. This is like, it puts, it takes the socks off or it gets the hose again. Then we have Stephen Bain. Stephen Bain just had socks everywhere. Described as an 18-inch thick carpet of socks with socks hanging from lampshades and socks even in the microwave. So we've got, like, the Hannibal Lecter Stephen and we've got the Ed Gain Stephen. Yes. But in reality, they're just the odd couple. They are. It's just... They're they're uh, just a a mismatched pair. pair of socks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So here's a question. If somebody stole your socks, would you want them to be with the neat guy or the microwave messy guy? Why do I have to choose? <laughs> I'm honestly, like, I know how my OCD is. I want it to be the neat. I don't want it to be either of them, but if it has to be somebody, the neat guy. Because at least then they're, they're, they're tucked away, they're preserved. But then it's also got my photo with it. And I don't, no, the messy guy. I want to, I lost in the fucking sea of socks. Like, I don't want, no. If you're in the microwave, I mean, if you microwave a dish sponge, it, like, cleans it. So maybe that's why they were in the microwave. I don't know. But there's a lot of, uh, also, mixed in from both places, they found a lot of homegrown porn. Which Um, probably shouldn't be a surprise at all at this point. So, both of them pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit mass acts of gross indecency in the Liverpool Crown Court. I am shocked. They were not charged, though, for the fake charity act. Which is what I would think. This is like what See, I that's said. what I would have thought that it would have like really gotten them on. Yeah. Because the like acts of indecency, I think, would be so especially exactly. at that time minor. This is what I can't find. What broke the case? And like I said, this happened in the '90s. To me, the fact that you're collecting anything under the pretense of being for charity right, should have been fraudulent. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Of that, okay. And I spent a lot of trying time trying to find this until did I you, realized uh, you, I hated myself. Did you go for ankle this. deep in research for this? I did go ankle deep. Yeah. 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 So the police put out advertisements trying to get people to claim their stolen property, and not a single victim responded. I, yeah, you know what? Like, I, no. No, no. So because no one wanted their socks back, the police donated them to the Salvation Army. So out there, there are people who went to Salvi and bought themselves a nice used pair of socks that were in some guy's microwave or, like, Rolodex. They could still be out there, Mel. <laughs> These socks could still be out there walking around in the world. There might be a sole survivor out there. <laughs> it's just mismatched out in the woods. So this is where Bane, our organized sock collector, okay. his situation gets weirder. Because they did the dumbest thing in the world. In prison, his job was to run the prison laundry. <sighs> where he was known to take great interest in watching all the inmates' socks. <laughs> I, oh God, the sock puppet like <laughs> visual just got so much worse for me, Mel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after his prison sentence, Bain was, went on to join the Jehovah's Witnesses, but then he was thrown out of the oh, religion. Wait, back that up. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is a wild pipeline to Jehovah's Witness. Witness yeah, you know, um, but he was kicked out of the Jehovah's Witnesses for acts of gross sexual misconduct. Again, I'm shocked. Yeah, and somewhere someone was just organizing socks at a Salvation Army. Wow, we got a really good donation this month. <laughs> I wish I could translate your look of a slight disappointment. I don't even know how to describe it. I'm never a person that's at a loss for words. <laughs> yeah, you so, are not. You are not. That, okay. one, that one was good. <laughs> not buying socks from Salvation Army anymore? Nope, turn hill and left. Okay, yes. <laughs> So 
Oh, I lied. I forgot. I actually have three short stories. This one's very short, though. I mean, after that last one, I'm feeling kind of defeated, so... It, it's okay. This one's not as bad. So, a 19-year-old kid in Nice, France decided to game a self-checkout system. Okay. Fair um, enough. Beat the system. I, I can applaud that. So, the kid walked up to the scale on the produce section, keyed in the item as apples, and he took the sticker that came off for apples, put it on the item, walked out to the self-checkout, scanned it, paid, and left with a PlayStation 4. Okay. Which he got for the price of, like, three pounds of apples. Apples, yeah. He was a bit stupid about this, though. Flew too close to the sun and tried going back and stealing a second PlayStation this way, by which point they had uh, wised up. Um, this time caught. He had a theft of 300 euros and arise, uh, arrested him. Now, the question is, why did he need two PlayStations? Yeah, maybe maybe he wanted a PlayStation 8. <laughs> No, he sold the first console to pay for a train ticket home and back again to steal the second plate station. <laughs> and and um, I need to, I have friends in France and I, I need to ask what their man's mass transit costs are because that doesn't seem right. Because my other thing is like, I can't imagine anywhere in, a, in like the United States in America where I could go somewhere that I could, like, easily access both Apples and a PlayStation. Walmart. But, like, they usually walk it to the counter for That's you. That's true. Like, if it's a high price item, like, that That's just true. blows my mind that I can walk in and be like, I'm going to get some apples, uh, you know, maybe a couple of grapes, toss a PlayStation 5 in the <laughs> cart while I'm at it, you know. <laughs> Milk, bread, Xbox. <laughs> yeah, you know how storm's I coming. I know how people live their lives. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> So we have finally, we're going to have a longer one. All right. This one is a sports one, so I hope you've recovered from the New York Islanders episode. Uh, I have not. Uh, it's okay. I'm still pucked up. For me, it's that, well, first of all, right after that, we went to Maine and everything was labeled Down Easter. Uh, yeah, and I had so Down funny. Easter and Alexa stuck in my head for like three weeks left. I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, instead of one man scamming a league, we have a gang of people creating a fake leave league. This sounds like a great movie, though. Oh, it would be. So we're going to India. One of the most popular sports is cricket. Yep. This is... Thanks, colonialism and imperialism. <laughs> this is just in 2022. This was, like, very recent. Most recent case, actually, we've, we've looked at it. Uh, so the major league over there is the Indian Premier League, which goes by the IPL. Okay. The IPL wrapped up their season uh, for the year, and a YouTube channel just called IPL starts live streaming right after their season ends. So if you were really keen-eyed, you'd see that in this, they were claiming that the IPL stood for the Indian Premier Cricket League, which does not spell IPL, but Cor that's okay. okay yeah. um, and if you were at all familiar with cricket, which I am not, there was something wrong with the game. The players were less than professional, might have even been clumsy. The camera shots were very close in, never really lingering on the players. Um, and you might have noticed that players showed up in different games on different teams from, like, game to game. <laughs> what happens was this gang produced, or pur purchased a fear in Gujarat and set it to, up to look like a cricket pitch. They spray-painted the oh lines, halogen lamps. There's high-definition cameras. They brought bats and balls and t-shirts for a couple of different real teams. And then they hired day laborers who were normally like picking fruit and stuff and said, we're going to pay you to play cricket for a day. And they're paying them higher than their normal day labor fee to come and play cricket. So of course these yeah, guys- Yeah, of course I'd, yeah. Show, I'd show up. Yeah, but they were supposed to pretend to be professional cricket players. The umpire was the only one on the field who knew what was actually going on, who was in on the deal. And he ran around with this like walkie talkie, but was also talking in an earpiece the whole time. Oh enthusiastically signaling plays. In fact, he was described as overly enthusiastic. Meanwhile, somewhere in Russia, the other half of the scam is unfolding. Mushrooms. <laughs> Not mushrooms this time. Um, Russians might love mushrooms. Russians might love mushrooms. <laughs> That's not what I meant to See, say. See, uh, the yeah. radio waves are getting to you It now. is the radio waves, yeah. Russians aren't really fans of cricket, but there's lots of gambling in Russia. So scammers convinced the Russians that to bet on the matches that were being broadcast on oh YouTube. Oh my gosh. The camera didn't show the bleachers because there were none. 
To sell the idea this was happening to a sold out crowd, they downloaded crowd noise files. <laughs> like crowd noise from dot a live WAB. Audience. <laughs> exactly. Piped them through the broadcast. Uh, they also brought in a local who was known around town for doing a, a great impersonation of a cricket uh, broadcaster who was very famous. And the umpire who was calling the match was being signaled with this earpiece on which way to score things to maximize the scammer profits. And he would signal the players to hit miss hits and stuff like that. And the footage would cut around the calls if it didn't match up to what the players were doing. They made semi-professional graphics to display the scores as the match unfolded. And the players were not cricket players. Some of them did not know how to play cricket, so they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> Bets poured in through the Telegram app, which shouldn't be surprising uh, because Telegram. But why from Russia? Well, first of all, betting in sports is illegal in India, so they had to move out. You have to outsource. And because cricket isn't popular in Russia, they were less likely to pick up on how weird everything was. Right, yeah. I'm actually kind of fascinated to the degree of preparation and research for this whole scam. This is fascinating. Part of what, the the, the one article that described it, it made me think more like Calvin Ball, though, because they weren't necessarily even following the rules of cricket. It was just like, oh, no, he tossed it over there. That's a four-point foul miss check match mate you know <laughs> field goal miss <laughs> exactly. eight strikes before oh, you put in a no, penalty that, 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 he totally violated diamond. a rule that only exists on the imaginary page 18 you know yeah. it was very much if things weren't going the way that they wanted it to go to maximize profit they would just make up something so they played nine games like this um youtube channel only had 250 s- subscribers but that's still better than we have right now uh, and also like there's somebody putting money on that like oh, yeah. they kept going so yeah. um and they were shut down by, by the police um none of the uh the organizers were arrested the players were just asked to provide information and weren't charged with anything which i think is kind of the right call because yeah i agree because like if you're just kind of like hey come look like you're playing cricket i doubt they really told many of the details yeah, of exactly. what was going on at that point they're basically being like a non-union extra in a correct. movie you know? correct here's um, your sandwich for the day be happy you're here but actually apparently it was a fairly profitable thing yeah. fake cricket and i wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a fake cricket match and i real wouldn't either yeah that's so. crickets. Just crickets. crickets. Crickets and mushrooms. Crickets and mushrooms. Tell you what. And socks. If we... Uh, <laughs> we got off on the wrong foot with that one. That would be our first smart reverse. If we don't socks. have... And if we don't have 250 subscribers by the end of the year, mm-hmm. we're just going to start a, spa- a fake sports league. Okay. Can it, can it be like something ridiculous that we're not... We're making up the rules as we go? Correct. We're okay. going to basically pull a basketball. Okay. And mishmash stuff and revolutionize... Athletics. Sounds great. I mean, well, and we don't stop I, there. We take it to the Olympics. You know. I am the least athletic human being ever, so that would be great. That's we will be able to be. Everybody like, loves an underdog in a sport that they've correct, just created themselves. Correct. You know what? Pickleball's out there now. We can do <laughs> anything, Mel. And we can get the Russians to bet on it. Correct. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I like. No, <laughs> and not anyone from Liverpool either. I'm sorry. No, 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 no people from Liverpool. No, no, no Russians. So, yeah, that's what I got for today. Um, two little ones, and we're going to be starting on spooky season. Yeah. And I have an entire episode of three stories that are, like, literally just geared towards you. All right. And your interests. Just I am because. so ready. And I have an episode that's going to be geared more to more my interests. So. All right. But it's going to be a very skeptical truth spooky season. So X-File. Okay, I'm good with that. Yeah. All I'm right. ginger, you know. Yeah, I was about to say, we've got yeah, a Scully. Yeah, so. Scully is good. Yeah. <laughs> I could do worse. If you've liked what you've heard or you'd like to recommend something that we should look into and speak on, you can always reach out to us at beggarsbeliefpodcast at gmail.com. Find us on Instagram at beggarsbeliefpodcast or feel free to please listen, subscribe, and review, five stars no less, Beggars Belief on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Also, look for us on YouTube. Yay. And from this side of the microphone, remember, don't take people's socks for <laughs> charity. <laughs> And don't believe everything you hear. Yeah, and yeah, that, that one. That, that's it. <laughs>